Good day, Grade 10s. In today's lesson, we are going to be looking at temperature and how it affects phase changes or changes of state of matter. So matter can change from one phase to another, in other words, from a solid to liquid or to gas or vice versa, by adding or removing heat energy. And energy is usually in the form of heat. So let's look at this little animation here. Yeah, we can see we've got some particles that are obviously in a solid state and the temperature is increasing from 0 degrees Celsius up. Now, as the temperature pre approaches MP, which stands for the melting point, the particles gain a lot more energy and you'll notice that they suddenly have moved from this fixed structure into what looks like a liquid. And as you keep going and heating it up, you will see that suddenly lots and lots of energy, lots of energy, and at this point we've reached the boiling point, which is the temperature at which the liquid changes to a gas. Right, now I want to carry it on with the PowerPoint. So these changes of state are basically called specific names. So from a liquid to, a, sorry, from a solid to a liquid, we call it melting. From a liquid to a gas, we call it evaporation. But from a gas to a liquid, we say that it has condensed and from a liquid to a solid, we call it freezing. Now there's a special thing where this actually skips a step. We go straight from a solid to a gas and that is called sublimation. So let's look at this little video which demonstrates sublimation for you. So iodine is a solid and normally when it changes directly into a gas if it's heated but we can do it a little bit more safely if we mix it with some zinc powder and then we add more water. The reason we add the zinc powder is because it acts as a catalyst so it speeds up the reaction. So you can see that those dull grey little crystals are forming this beautiful purpley magenta type cloud of smoke and so it has changed directly from a solid to a gas and that is called sublimation. Right, now the temperature and phase changes, the temperatures at which the phase changes occur has specific names. So obviously if we're going from a solid to a liquid, the temperature at which it changes is going to be called the melting point. And if we go from a liquid to a gas, it is called the boiling point. However, if we go the other way, from a gas to a liquid, it is called a condensation point. And from a liquid to a solid, we call it the freezing point. Now we can tell what phase a substance is at a specific temperature if we know what its melting and boiling points are. So for example water, we know that water's freezing point, you know it's a temperature at which it goes from a liquid to a solid is naught. So if the water is at minus 10 degrees, we know that it's going to be solid because we know that the freezing point is going to be naught. However, we also know that the boiling point of water changing from a liquid to a gas is 100 degrees. So if the water is heated to 140 degrees Celsius, we know it's going to be in the gaseous phase because it is above the boiling point. Now he has a lovely table of some of the melting and boiling points of different substances and it just gives you an indication of what a wide range there is. So we know water, water we usually use on everyday experiments. So we know that water has a melting point from naught at 0 degrees Celsius, in other words it goes from ice to water and then it goes from water to water vapor or steam at 100 degrees Celsius. Look how cold the melting point of, mine, of nitrogen and oxygen are. That's minus 200 degrees Celsius, 210 degrees Celsius and minus 196 degrees Celsius which means that as we can see nitrogen and oxygen are gases at room temperature which are about 25 degrees whereas diamond we would have to eat up hugely to 4830 degrees before we could even get it to be a gas. In fact we'd have to heat it up to 3550 degrees to get it to be a liquid and you need to be able to label it. So what is happening here we can see that on our y-axis we've got the temperature 
and on the x-axis we've got time. So we start off at minus 10 degrees Celsius simply because it is below the melting point of liquid, of water, so therefore we know that this is going to be ice. Then at zero degrees Celsius there is a melting point, but you will notice that the time carries on for a while before it changes to a liquid. And the reason for this is it takes a little bit of time for all the bonds to break and for there to be enough energy for it to be pure water. And then as the temperature increases, so it shows, uh, goes up to being water and then again we have the boiling point. And again it takes a little bit of time for us to go from a boiling point to steam. Okay, so that is the heating curve of water. You have to learn it. You need to make sure you understand it. You need to understand that the melting point is from solid to liquid and the boiling point is from liquid to gas. Right, thank you grade 10s. I hope you found this useful.